everyone, if you can hear that noise, that is the plumbers taking out our bathroom and look at all this stuff everywhere. It's taking over our entire lounge, there's our shower. Um, however, I wanted to record this video because a lot of people have been asking me about general revision tips and actually that sun is in the way and they want to know the best way to revise in lots of subjects, um, not just science so I thought I'd talk through what I what my approach was when I was doing my GCSEs first of all I am going to mention science the mistake I made and I will say right now that I was a massive nerd at school I really wanted to do well in my exams and I did work ridiculously hard and there's a lot of things I'd wish now that I'd known and first of all if you are one of those people that's kind of keen to over revise basically don't do what I did which is basically learn my teacher's notes that they gave me in class I learned my revision guide and I learned a lot of my textbook. That is ridiculous. I don't know why I did it. What you need to do is pick one thing. So that could be your textbook or it could be your exercise book notes or it could be your revision guide. But just stick to one source of notes. Don't go and learn all three because it's ridiculous. So if you're really happy with your teacher's notes, just use those. Um, otherwise, just use the CGP revision guide. Um, I find them really helpful. They can be occasionally annoying in tone, but they do definitely have everything in them that you need, and they don't add any extra um, fluff, so you're not going to waste your time learning that stuff. So take your CGP guide. Um, write notes if that's your thing. Um, don't ever feel pressured to write notes or do loads of revision. I went to uni with so many different people, and some of them are so clever, they don't need to revise. And if you're one of those lucky people, don't feel guilty if you're not revising. If you know you know it, then that is enough. For people whose memory is less good, you will need to revise. Um, you might need to make notes. If using pretty colours helps, do that. But again, revision isn't about making beautiful notes. It's about making sure that you are doing some proper work. Because um, I do know people love making beautiful notes and it makes them feel really good. But fundamentally, if you don't know anything after all those hours you've spent making those notes, then they're not actually helping you. So by all means, make your notes, but make sure it's helpful. The second thing with revision is it is quite good to draw up a bit of a timetable, whether it's in your head or on paper. So that could be literally going 9 to 10 science, 10 to 11 maths. However, oh gosh, I, that is so loud. I'm sorry about the plumber. Um, however, don't, don't kid yourself that you're working when you're not. Don't allow yourself to be distracted by Instagram, by Snapchat, etc. By all means, go on those things. But when you're revising, revise. So even if that means you only do 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes of revision, make sure that every single second that you're revising that it's counting and then have a break. So seriously, when I'm working and preparing for my two teas, I can't work endlessly. I get tired too. So my advice is, what I do is literally work really hard for 10-15 minutes, then have a quick break, check your Instagram, check your Facebook, whatever, and then go back to it. Because at the end of the day, it's much better that in total you do 40 minutes, for example, of amazing work where you're really engaging with the material than sitting there for four hours most of the time on Instagram because, you know, who are you really cheating? And I know that's a cliche, but it is actually yourself. You do need to make sure that every minute you're spent revising um, is that you're actually doing stuff and that you're turning off your phone or whatever. Um, and then, and the other great thing about it as well is you must allow yourself some fun when you're revising. Don't just think of the revision period as stretching out endlessly um, like a black tunnel with nothing to look forward to. Plan really fun things to do, and I don't mean going on your phone because that is so unsatisfying and so annoying when you're looking at other people having more fun. If it's going out with your friends, if it's, I don't know, um, watching something on Netflix, by all means do it, but make sure you've done that revision before so that when you're actually watching Netflix, you can really enjoy it and feel like you're, you've are you earned it rather than feeling guilty. Because at the end of the day, you should completely treat yourself for working hard, but equally, when you're working, you need to be working and not going on Snapchat. So those are general revision tips. Um, when I was revising science, I made notes and then I reread over them, tried to say them out loud to myself. Um, if you've got a parent or a brother or sister that would like to help you, it's always great to go and teach them what you're saying because if you can teach them, then you know it. 
um, or even your dog. Just try and talk it through with someone. Um, if you're getting bored of writing notes, check your knowledge. Go on BBC Bite Sides, take a test bite and see where you are with that and you'll feel really good for the fact that you're actually recalling stuff. Just keep it really varied. If you're getting into rut, then just stop because you're not going to be achieving anything and you'll just be making yourself miserable. My hand is getting so tired. Um, so yeah, and another thing I would do is force yourself to go over the notes you've written later on in the evening because you're basically reinforcing what you've learnt, which can only be a good thing, and then have another look a week later. That is something I'm really bad at doing, but it will really help you. So that's everything for science, I think. With maths, I always love maths and science, so I never found maths particularly horrendous, even though you're going to hate me for saying that, because I know lots of you hate maths. What I did is I literally did it in front of the TV. I don't know if I should say that. But I did it watching TV because I didn't need to concentrate that much, because obviously with maths, you need to just make sure that you're going over questions and that you are um, getting the answers right. So I could do that with the TV on. Um, if you can do that too, do that. Otherwise, you might need to concentrate more. I hate looking at myself when I'm filming. This is horrible. Um, so that was maths and science. Now English. Now English was not my strong point at all. I hated it. I wish I was one of those lucky people that's really passionate about it. But, oh my gosh, I hated it. I hated it when the teacher used to set us essays because she would set us homework for you know day after day after day no homework no homework and then I'd be dreading the moment when she said get out your homework diaries you're writing a three-page essay I hated that um I don't know how I did okay in it I think my biggest tip is to make sure you know your materials really well now I was studying Angela Zatter's and Educating Rita my god I read those plays and books like I'm not joking like 10 20 times I knew those things inside out and I think that's really important because when you're in the exam and you need to pull a quote out you don't want to be like where on earth is that quote I'm not saying learn where the quote is I'm just saying have at least to get no knowledge sorry that you're looking at the start of the book or you're looking at the end or towards the middle you know have a really good idea of where you're looking to find the quote to back up whatever you're saying um I <laughs> I also struggled just with essay writing and I can't tell you how to write essays because I, I don't think I can still write essays but I did like buying those York Notes books which accompany a lot of the passages um, because they give you loads of really good ideas and it's really worth sketching out some essay plans. Don't bother writing the whole essay because that's going to take way too long but you know, have a go at writing some essay plans for some questions which are likely to come up. Obviously talk to your teacher about how to structure essays. I really can't help with that because I'm useless. Um, but like I said, just really read the material again and again. Um, you know, get good with your spelling. I mean, some people's spelling is so awful. It's really important that you can know the difference between there, there and there. Um, and spelling words like definitely, why do adults even spell that wrong? It drives me crazy. Um, so yeah, like, I don't know why I'm talking about that, but read the materials. For other topics, obviously, essay subjects, history, RS, follow what I said for English. I'm sorry, I can't be more helpful, um, because I didn't, I didn't do history. I did things like geography, because that sits far more nicely with science. Um, I hope you found this video helpful. I'm sorry for all the ums. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to edit it. I just said um again. But obviously let me know if you have any questions and let me know if it was helpful and how I can help you in the future. So see you. Bye. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I forgot to say it as well. When you've finished revising or even during your revision process, make sure, oh my gosh, make sure you go through past exam questions, especially with science. Because I found that I learnt it all and I thought I knew it. And then I went through some questions and I just couldn't answer a single question. And that is the most upsetting thing imaginable. And the reason is, is because exam technique is a huge thing in its own right. It's not enough to know the material. You need to know how to translate that into marks in the exam. So answer as many papers. Get hold of as many past papers as you possibly can. Answer them and go through those mark schemes. A lot of them are available online. And just see where you pick up the marks and where you don't. Because in science, there are so many questions where you get marks just for saying one word, like amylase, or oh, why am I picking biology, or catalyst, and it's these specialist words that will give you all the marks, because I teach way too many people that write ten lines for an answer and only pick up one or two marks, and it's not because they're silly, because they're far from it, they're so clever, but they just haven't quite got the grasp of what words they need to include in order to get those marks. So please, please promise me 
that you'll go through some past paper questions because I promise that's where you'll pick up the marks. My face looks like a butternut squash. I'm going to sign off here. See you guys soon.